Hello, I'm Jesse Cody, an organizer with the IAM. I'm here to assist non-union workers like yourself in their desire to become union at the respective facility. I don't do it for you, I help guide you through the process. What we did here is put together a short video of questions and answers from our newest members at multiple recently unionized facilities. If you have any further questions about unionizing your facility, I'm always available to you via email at jessec at iam751.org or phone number 1-800-763-1301. Just ask for me. I'm sure you'll find this video very informative as you do your research in our great organization. Well, it's uh, Shannon Carr. I've been with, uh, I started out as L3 and then URS for about two years. And what products or services does the facility produce? Uh, primarily just upkeep of the A6B prowler, keep them flying for seat time for uh, carrier calls. So in your own words, how has unionizing and getting a good collective bargaining agreement benefited you and your coworkers? Oh, well, primarily it's, it's, uh, it uh, gave us something to go by and gave us a collective voice. That's, that's the most important thing. You know, it's, uh, even initially when the union first came in, everybody's like, well, we can negotiate this now. It's like, no, you can't. You're one guy standing up in a room full of 180 and you're just somebody yelling. You know, you, you can't get anything done that way. When you, uh, after you unionize, uh, you're, you're a collective. You know, it's not one or five people out of 170 or 180 folks. It's 180 folks that want this thing and, you know, it'll get done. Okay. Uh, my name is Mark Kuntz. I've been uh, with the CFT now for uh, almost four years. Uh, well, most importantly, um, pays is going to make a, a big difference to all our members. Uh, benefits in terms of our medical coverage, um, uh, overtime uh, benefits. Uh, it's going to improve quality of life for everybody. Right, what about uh, the TDY? TDY was a big, big point for a lot of people. And this is really going to make some positive changes that people were really looking forward to getting. And now that they're going to have that, it's going to make an enormous difference to having a sound set of rules for the company and for the membership to live up to. So what's your name? My name is Janine Jensen. Uh, unofficially known at work as Sam. Nickname. Um, did the employer consultants try to spread half truths uh, negatively about the IAM? Oh, it was try to convince you pretty to much all them? negative. IAM. Yeah, there was. Do you understand now why they were trying to do that? Oh yeah, they wanted to continue doing the things the way they wanted. You know, the unfairness, and you know, we had people getting raises and other ones weren't. You know, one would get a dollar raise and another one working just as hard doing the same kind of work. Um, that was one of them, a quarter raise. Right. You know. Um, I'm Wayne Griffith. I work at Pepsico Extrusion in Yakima, Washington. I am an operator, an extrusion operator. I've been there seven years. I've been with the union since we started four years ago. I'm a union steward. Well, going through that process, um, was the IM representative's explanation of how the process works, the legal part, plus um, all the things that happen with the employer and the consultant and all that stuff. Is that uh, pretty accurate? Can I explain pretty, it? Yeah, it was, it was real close. Um, almost everything that you guys had said that the company would do to try to get it out, I mean, they did almost to a T. They, uh, they hired their own lawyers, they hired their own guy, uh, union blocker or whatever it was, to come in and tell, bash the union that you guys don't need this, this is what they're going to do, and just badmouth the union the whole time. And they had special meetings just non-anti-union meetings that we shouldn't go union and you know and they, they took up our monthly meetings that we usually have and so it was pretty much a was pretty close to everything they said they were going to do they did do um how would you um categorize it was it uh fear intimidation coercion uh did they run the fear factor on you that uh uh, if, if they did that, then what specifics did they say about the union that you should be scared of? A lot of their thing, their biggest biggest thing was they always used the word strike. Strike. It was always strike. You know? they, and they always the ones that were saying that, you know, you guys go union, you're going to strike. You know, and no, we're never talking strikes or anything else, but that was their biggest thing was strike. 
scaring us with the word strike on what could happen, that we could lose jobs, and if you go on strike, and this, you do this, you get strikes, and it's just, it was, that was pretty much the fear that they put into a lot of people. And then some of the morale, not the morale, but the, the management was more, it was a line that, you know, you know, management's better than you now, and you just stay down here, and we're not going to talk to you no more if you're going to try to do this, and it was, it was a kind of weird situation sometimes, you know. Very stressful. Yes, it was very stressful. <clears throat> okay, now do, do you have input into proposals that were submitted to the to the employer for negotiations and uh, yes we filled out we filled out a, a survey the employee survey we had two actually and doing that we were able to voice our concerns and they prioritized them which ones were the most important and that was that was very nice because people had a voice and uh, Six months prior to the contract, we were given it, and then whatever down the road closer to the contract, what was more important, and we it got out. The voice, everybody's voice got heard, and we it felt like a real democratic democracy type of system that we had in place. And it was really nice to hear, very fair, and everybody had their voice heard. So some of these companies that we go and we talk to the folks who are thinking about unionizing, they like to throw out dues. Like dues are some big bad thing that you got to pay into the union. Now granted, you know, members don't pay anything to this organization until they accept right. a contract they or actually a have collective something. bargaining agreement. So, but in essence, our, well, our dues structure is 2.25 times the weighted average wage mm -hmm. Of a group, so like the folks at URS, whatever that weighted average wage is, times 2.25 is about what your dues are. And that equates to about 25 cents to 30 cents an hour, per somewhere hour, in that right. range, right? So, would you say that this collective bargaining agreement either meets or exceeds at least that amount? Absolutely. Yeah. The uh, in our case, it's gonna, you know, the take home for the average guy, even after dues, is gonna be well in the black, you know, or, or green. Uh, they're gonna be, and that was uh, that was one of the uh, tactics that the um, corporation used initially. It was like, oh my God, you guys are gonna have to pay dues, and it's gonna be this large exorbitant amount. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said, even even your basic guy, you know, at the end of the day, if you if you make an extra two hundred dollars a month and it costs you sixty dollars in union dues that month, that's one hundred and forty to the good. You know, and you break it down Barney style to these guys, they understood that, and that makes sense, you know. Uh, but it was a lot of propaganda. You know, these guys were trying to uh, dispel, uh, disorganize, you know, any any way possible. They, they just didn't want to get it involved because uh, it would hinder uh, their level. Well, not their level of management. It would, uh, it would put down in black and white how the workforce needs to be handled in certain scenarios. And that was something they didn't want, you know. Even now, with the collective bargaining agreement, they're trying to figure out how to get around this to make it most cost effective or profitable to the corporation itself. Uh, you know, screw the screw the guy out there working, turning the wrenches and putting in the overtime and doing without or uh, the case. It, it all comes down on the corporate side to the bottom dollar, and they're working. You know, like I said, even with the CBM place, they're trying to figure out a way to get around it uh, just to increase their black. On, on their side so um, good luck with that we were pretty thorough <laughs> when we sat down and, and went over the, the specific scenarios that most of the workforce was upset about so uh, they're covered you know and it's going to be very difficult uh, I don't think uh, I don't think they're going to have much luck trying to skirt around it so you but think before they had free reign you know they could just pretty much do how they wanted when they wanted so so dues was a, a definite good investment oh yeah yeah, it's it's uh, you know pennies on the dollar can can uh, when you consider what it, what you'll what you'll actually be bringing home, you know, in your uh, in your uh, biweekly or your monthly or even your annual, you, know, you put it on paper and it makes sense. It's a small price to pay for uh, uh, represent representation, you know, <clears throat> with a uh, you know signed CBA. So definitely definitely worth it. 